Item number 5917 Level 2 Restricted Containment Class Safe Disruption Class Connect Risk Class Warning Special Containment Procedures SCP-5917-1 is to be contained in a standard anomalous corpse cryogenic chamber in Site-99 for its preservation. SCP-5917-2 is to be stored in Lockbox 32-12 in Site-33 Secure Storage Zone 1, the Chained Library. SCP-5917-2 is currently in the possession of GOI-5917, the Wandsman. The Foundation continues to attempt tracking these individuals. Their current location remains unknown. SCP-5917 is a collective designation for two items recovered from the Osparalons Islands. Both items are believed to be associated with GOI-5917. SCP-5917-1 is the cadaver of a previously unknown avian species. Collected evidence suggests it is the body of a being referred to as the Twelfth Wandsman of Kirador. SCP-5917-2 is a brown parchment scroll contained in a non-anomalous silver scroll case. Attempts to unravel this scroll in its entirety have proven unsuccessful, and it consistently appears to have the exact same amount of unraveled parchment. Thus, it is believed to have a functionally infinite length. All attempts to take samples of the scroll have failed, as it seems to be impossible to tear apart. The scroll appears to be some sort of map, containing a series of spirals with different labeled points appearing along them. The labels change based on the native language spoken by the person holding it. Several of the labels correspond to known dimensions. The illustrations on the scroll induce a feeling of severe vertigo in the viewer. The use of a cognitohazard exclusion visor partially nullifies the effects. Stating out loud the name of one of the labeled dimensions will transport the user to a random location within that dimension, always containing habitable conditions for the user's species. Individuals who have used the map multiple times claim that there are methods of teleporting to specific locations with the application of will. Prolonged use of SCP-5917-2 alters the user's physiology into a form similar to SCP-5917-1. Continuous usage also appears to cause the user to develop an understanding of multiple languages, including several that the Foundation does not have reference to in its linguistic databases. Documentation of these languages is still ongoing. Alterations caused by SCP-5917-2 increase with continued usage. Recovery Log 1-3-20 SCP-5917 was recovered from the Osparalons Islands, off the coast of the small fishing town of San Sobral, Spain. Residents of San Sobral reported that an unrecognized boat had moored there for several days and called the authorities seeking an explanation. Foundation retrieval teams investigated the site and determined that the rowboat contained a decomposing avian entity, approximately 2.4 meters tall from head to foot designated SCP-5917-1. The creature had apparently received multiple stab wounds before perishing. The creature's four claws were wrapped around SCP-5917-2 at the time of discovery. Incident Report 2520 Researcher Barnes was examining SCP-5917-2 with a mimetic exclusion visor when he read out loud the phrase, Spider's Horde, in surprise. He was immediately transported to Dimension 12-A-3-B. Sidebar, Dimension 12-A-3-B Dimension 12-A-3-B is a recently discovered reality that consists of a system of underground tunnels containing large amounts of stolen items and humans, living and dead. These items are dragged into the dimension by a group of semi-sapient giant arachnids, presumably using a currently unknown method of interdimensional travel. MTF Sigma-2 discovered this dimension on January 1, 2020, 
while investigating a series of disappearances in a rural zone of Minnesota. They found numerous large chambers, similar to those dug by Tenensidae arachnids, commonly known as trapdoor spiders. In spite of radar checks showing no evidence of caverns, investigations into these chambers were conducted, revealing that they were a part of an interconnected, shifting tunnel network, containing both a species of giant arachnids and their victims, many of whom were kept alive and unbound for unknown reasons. The chambers also contained a large assortment of seemingly random objects. Items deemed of high economic value, which had been reported missing to Minnesota State Troopers, were discovered within the tunnels. It is believed that the giant arachnids are responsible for their presence, but they have yet to be observed collecting these items. Potential methods of performing search and rescue operations within this space are being discussed. Researcher Barnes arrived in a relatively calm area but panicked upon hearing an arachnid entity moving towards him. He attempted to defend himself by using a salvaged bar stool as an improvised weapon, but then realized how SCP-5917-2 functioned. He held the scroll and stated home as his desired destination. Researcher Barnes returned to our dimension, missing his pinkies and all the skin on his hands. Upon his return, he was still holding both SCP-5917-2 and the bar stool. However, the latter was stained by his blood. No blood stains were visible on SCP-5917-2. His injuries healed within three days, but his hands had reformed into a different morphology. Interview Log 2-10-20 Director Nakamura Agent Briggs, can you please repeat what you just repeated? Agent Briggs. Yes, sir. I'd like to use SCP-5917-2 to attempt a rescue mission to recover Agent White. For the record, Agent Briggs, do you remember what happened to Agent White? During our exploration into Dimension 12-A-3-B, we got surrounded by spiders. Agent White staged a distraction so the rest of us could escape. He was declared MIA. And you are aware of what happened to Researcher Barnes, correct? And that we do not currently have a reconstructed method to restore him? Yes, sir. I am aware. You are also aware that Researcher Barnes had to be sedated for the duration of his recovery because he could not stop screaming? Permission to speak freely, sir. Granted. Look, I'm just offering to do what any good soldier would. I'm no specialist, but the fact that Barnes pulled a chair out means I might be able to get Jerry out too. And I know Jerry would trade a hell of a lot more than his hands to save me. I don't think I could live with myself if I didn't at least try to find him. There is an extended pause. I'm not letting you do this without a full psychological evaluation. Thank you, sir. Rescue Operation After Action Report Operation Codename Wayfinder Commanding Officer Director Yusuke Nakamura Field Lead Agent Roger Briggs Agents Recovered 0 Civilians Recovered 6 Injuries Sustained Expected Transmogrification Psychological Evaluation February 20, 2020 Director Thompson You understand you have no obligation to do what you're proposing. Agent Sink Agent Briggs with all due respect, Doc, Penny's got her heart in the right place, but she's still green. More to the point, she's young and promising. It's better to send out an old hand like me than someone who's likely to be in charge of the whole MTF someday. Agent Briggs, you were wounded in action. You could retire from the Foundation right now, with full disability. I ain't dancing a jig about what happened, Doc. You know that well and good but I'd hardly call myself disabled. Heck, my gripping at the range is looking better than ever. That in and of itself could be cause for concern. Look, there are some survivors that have built a camp down there. They ain't pushovers, and they said they're keeping their eyes peeled for Agent White. The fact of the matter is, I'm the best chance Jerry's got of getting out of there. I could probably even save more civvies while I'm at it. I'm glad your empathy has survived this experience, but do you think you can be objective on this mission? You have a personal stake.
Agent Briggs let out a long breath, his claws drumming against the interview table. If y'all think it'd be better to send Penny, I'd get it. And more importantly, I'm a soldier to the core. I know how to follow orders. I said my piece, though. Very well. You do realize that we have no idea what repeated exposure to the map will do. I reckon I might as well find out for you. Heck, maybe my hair will grow back or some such and you'll be doing me a favor. But I'm ready to lay down my life if it comes to it. That's what being MTF means. Very well. Rescue Operation After Action Report Operation Codename Discount Shopping Commanding Officer Director Yusuke Nakamura Field Lead Agent Roger Briggs Agents Recovered Agent Gerald White Civilians Recovered 3 Injuries Sustained Minor Lacerations on Agent White's Back Transformation of Agent Briggs' Feet into Claws Appearance of feathers on Agent Briggs' arms. Interview log with Agent Penelope Singh, February 27, 2020. I'd like to start this by stating that Agent Briggs has never been anything but a model soldier. I have no reason to believe that he has any intent to cause harm to the Foundation, its objectives, or normalcy. I have nothing but respect for Agent Briggs and his service record. However, if you have something to report, I do, it's… He's been talking in his sleep in the barracks, sir. Night terrors are not… He wasn't speaking English, sir. I know he doesn't speak any other languages, or he didn't. I couldn't tell what most of them were, but he said something in Latin. What did he say? Out of the unexplained comes nothing. There is a pause. I see. We'll monitor the situation. Thank you for your report, Agent. Audio recording of initial research notes on Agent Briggs Dr. Hofstede reporting on February 27, 2020 Personal Notes Following reports of unusual nocturnal activity, Agent Briggs was brought in for additional testing. The feathers on his arms had grown out somewhat, and it was observed that his joints had subtle alterations. Agent Briggs had gained the ability to speak at least five languages that the Foundation could identify, and several more that we could not. Psychologically, Agent Briggs reported distress in his condition. He shared our concern over the mental alterations, and noted that the last time he used SCP-5917-2, he had experienced less nausea and appeared closer to his intended destination. No other mental alterations were detected. Research will continue. Agent Briggs Briefing Log March 15, 2020 You wanted to see me, sir? Agent Brig pauses and stands at attention, noticing O5-6 is present. They had been previously introduced during another mission. At ease, Agent Briggs. Agent, I hate having to ask this of you, but we have a mission for you. Approximately twenty minutes ago, those fools in the GOC began an engagement with the Serpent's Hand inside the extra-dimensional space known as the Wanderer's Library. A platoon from MTF Sigma-3 was gathering intelligence in the area, and is currently pinned down by the fire exchange. We have no meaningful way of knowing if you'll even be able to pinpoint their location. However, we also have no other method to save their lives. There is a short pause. Where's the map? Rescue Operation After Action Report Operation Codename As the Crow Flies Commanding Officer O5-6 Field Lead Agent Roger Briggs Agents Recovered 12 Civilians Recovered 0 Injuries Sustained 3 Agents KIA 2 Recovered in Critical Condition Bullet Wound to Agent Briggs' Shoulder due to Friendly Fire Agent Briggs now physiologically identical to SCP-5917-1 no healing process required. Assets lost. SCP-5917-2. See Incident Report for details. Incident Report March 15, 2020 Security camera footage shows Agent Briggs on the floor bleeding. His head is now similar to that of a turkey vulture. He is significantly taller and has grown additional plumage. 
He clutches SCP-5917-2 in his uninjured left war talon. His voice is pained, and somewhat more nasal. His beak moves softly with the words. He is surrounded by the surviving members of MTF Sigma-3, who are pointing guns at him. Medic! Multiple wounded! Shut up! Where did you take us? Who are you? What are you? Agents, holster your weapons right now! Director Nakamura and Agent White enter the camera view, with multiple medics following. The medics begin tending to the wounded. The team assigned to Agent Briggs hesitates. It's Agent Briggs! Now treat him! The medics begin tending to the Agent Briggs as well. MTF Sigma-3 lowers their weapons. That's better. You're at Site-33. Thank your sorry asses Briggs was there to extract you. What? How did we… We'll be debriefing you shortly. Now if you… There is a sound of a clearing throat. A large, previously unseen vulture creature, wearing an elaborate dress and a bowler hat enters the camera view. Notably, it has what appears to be another instance of SCP-5917-2 hanging from its waist. Director, if I might have a moment of your time. Every gun in the room turns on the unknown entity. The unknown entity holds out its talons in a placating gesture. There is no need for violence. I do apologize, but I'm afraid I need to borrow your pen, Director. The Director raises an eyebrow. What are you? A lovely lady who wishes to borrow your dictation pen for a few minutes. For the record, I only wish to borrow it out of courtesy. You can either let me use it, or know nothing for certain about what is going to happen in the next few minutes. The choice is yours. Why should I trust you? Why, because I'm a reporter. One who has burnt away much of her standard beauty, in search of the ultimate beauty of the truth. It's not easy to become a one's woman, as you well know. Now about your pen. After a moment's pause, Director Nakamura gives her his pen. Splendid. We'll be back in a jiffy. The unknown entity and Agent Briggs vanish. Security Notice The following recording was extracted from Director Nakamura's concealed tape recorder pen. We have done everything in our power to verify the following recording's veracity. There appears to be no alterations to the record whatsoever, be they digital, magical, or otherwise. It is theorized that the unknown entity borrowed Site Director Nakamura's recorder pen explicitly to allow us to verify its contents. The anomalous nature of the recordings, and of transcripts of it, seem to be fundamental, natural properties of the universe. The security threat resulting from these properties is currently unknown. Recording recovered from Director Nakamura's pen. Wands Woman. Ah, splendid. It's fully charged. This is the fourth Wands Woman of Kellon, an elected arbiter of our Honorable Guild. I have published many lovely articles in our Gazette, which can be found in the Wonders Library, or wherever fine interdimensional periodicals are sold. I would like to note for the benefit of the Carter that I distinctly said fine interdimensional periodicals. Your corporate propaganda is not appreciated, and we continue to have no interest in running your ads. Where are we? What did you… Ugh. I advise you to drink the tea, dear. It will accelerate your healing. A single bullet hole such as that is not likely to do much harm in the long run, but you need not wait the two days for it to close on its own. I, I'm good, thanks. My brothers… Your fellow soldiers will live. You reach them in time, and your foundation has such medicines as to make their wounds a trifle. I'm sorry for those you lost. I lost a brother recently as well, so I certainly understand the pain. Don't you… dare compare whatever the hell that was to… Mr. Briggs, I would ask that you not insult my order. We too risk everything to save others. I assure you the Twelfth Wandsman of Kirador put his life and limb on the line time and again to arm the people of the multiverse with knowledge. Many agents of the Void fell to his talons, more still to his words. So what was he doing in Spain? Ah. Asking the right questions now, aren't we? We'll make a scholar of all that is of you yet. Unfortunately, 
For that information, you'll have to wait for the Gazette's internal audit edition in 37 years. It's not particularly relevant at the moment in any case. So what is relevant, O oh Miss High and Mighty? What is relevant to this conversation is that you currently wield my brother's map and have more than proven yourself worthy of it. The question is, do you want it? I'm guessing that comes with some sort of obligations other than being a hideous vulture monster. I do object to characterizing us as hideous, dear. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and personally, I've grown rather fond of the non-standard beauty of a form that allows one to survive so much punishment in so many places. Still, you are not wrong. It does put distance between you and your fellow humans. That distance, and the pain of transformation, is the price you pay to demonstrate your resolve. My resolve for what? To save lives, and perspectives, so that they may not be lost to the void. You've certainly proven yourself more than capable of the former, but your lack of devotion to the latter concerns me. My devotion to perspective? Indeed, the… what is your phrase? Amnestization? Ugh. What a mouthful for your poor transcribers. In any case, you had no objections whatsoever to the removal of the memories and perspectives of the civilian people you saved. That sort of thing would only be allowed in the most dire of circumstances by our organization. I swore myself to the protection of normalcy. Besides, those memories would have brought them nothing but pain. A soft sigh is heard. If you take nothing else from this conversation, know that painful memories have value. They can provide you with great strength once properly understood, and even bring you closer to those who suffer. I can understand that, but I stand by my convictions. I suppose you do. I might as well be trying to explain myself to a Mechanite or one of the Nalka. Still, know that you have earned at least my respect. Perhaps in a few millennia you might reconsider. Shall I send you back to your director? I think that might be for the best. Very well. I shall keep your map safe. Will you be a deer and return to Penn? Security Notice At this time, no formal containment procedures are deemed necessary for Agent Briggs. He's one of ours.